When you encounter a phrase like multimodal therapy, what treatment does it bring to mind? It seems really intuitive on the surface, but in our research we discovered there isn't a clear definition of it at all. And if you ask just a handful of speech-language pathologists what they think multimodal therapy is, you'll find that you don't get agreement between people. A few examples. This paper describes multimodality training, where patients were encouraged to use a picture board, gesture and speech in conversation through practicing each one individually. Whereas this multimodal therapy had patients rearranging letters, copying, spelling and then verbalizing words using computer software. As a third example, this research aimed to improve spelling by having patients choose the correct word from semantic, phonological and orthographic distractors, and they also copied and verbalized words. And this was also called multimodal therapy. These three treatments don't have a whole lot in common, and so multimodal is a pretty uninformative title. Perhaps then we could take multimodal quite literally to mean therapies that involve multiple modalities. But the foundation of most treatments is use of a visual modality in combination with speech. That's two modalities, so is that multimodal? Or what if orthographic cues are in use? Then it's definitely multimodal. Or perhaps participants are writing the target word and are given phonemic cues. That's definitely using multiple modalities, so is that multimodal? Hopefully you can see that by using a literal definition, the question becomes not what is multimodal treatment, but what isn't multimodal treatment. Consistent definitions are vital. We need to decide what is multimodal treatment and what is not, to allow research to group and analyse treatments, and so that clinicians and patients can know which treatment is being referred to without having to read the methods sections of each paper. In this paper we conducted a scoping review to answer the question what types of aphasia therapy are labelled as multimodal. We used systematic search methods and included grey literature, and our search resulted in 33 original research items. The results showed that the term represents very different therapies with not a lot of consistency. For example, some used alternative modalities as stimuli for the participants to respond to. Some had participants producing multiple modalities in response to stimuli, and others used multimodal cues, and many used a combination of these. Some simply referred to a traditional cueing hierarchy as multimodal. So we propose that aphasia researchers need to be more cautious about using the term multimodal therapy as if its meaning is evident to everyone. We did find some dimensions that grouped the data. One important one was whether modalities were used to facilitate spoken or written output. So for example, using melody to aid speech production or using gesture to cue word retrieval. Using modalities as a means to an end or whether the modalities were being trained as communication in themselves, as in training AAC use or practicing drawing for conversation. There's a lot more detail about the results within the paper, but we've also proposed a definition and a model of multimodal therapy going forwards. We suggest that a treatment is not labelled multimodal if it involves only auditory speech or orthographic modalities and picture stimuli, as these are more or less ubiquitous in aphasia treatment. Instead, multimodal treatment may use these, but it should also use another non-verbal modality, perhaps melody, gesture, drawing or symbols. And then within the category of multimodal, we also propose that authors distinguish between multimodal therapy to improve spoken or written output, and multimodal therapy that trains these other modalities for use in real communication. Consensus on our model is required, but we believe it makes sense based on the data that we gathered and it should bring clarity to this research area and to aphasia in general.